Hello and welcome to our program, Where God Weeps, a program where we speak about the situation of the suffering church around the world. Today we're going to be considering the Cook Islands, a series of islands scattered across the Pacific Ocean, the expanse of which is similar to the size of Western Europe. To tell us more about the story of Catholics living in these remote communities, it is my very great privilege to welcome His Excellency Bishop Paul Donahue, the Bishop of the Rarotonga Diocese in the Cook Islands. Your Excellency, welcome to our program and thank you for being with us here today. Good morning, Mark. So it's my privilege to be here representing the Cook Islands this morning. Your Excellency, a quick question to you, just to give our those who are with us today on our program an idea of you, your, your background. Can you tell us, did you grow up in a traditional Catholic family? Uh, my family was very Catholic. Uh, on my father's side, I had three uncles who were priests, and on my mother's, one uncle. So we were very much aware of the church and very much aware of ministers uh, within the church. How many are you in your family? Eight children. And you're number the eldest. You're the eldest. Was it hard for your parents to see you go off to the missions? I think my family always wanted to see us uh, take up our responsibilities, which they saw outside of the family. And when it was time to move on, we were given every encouragement to move. Pushed out the door. <laughs> uh, you were born in New Zealand, raised in New Zealand. Um, did you always have a sense that you wanted to be a missionary? Or when did this first sense of your vocation come about, let's say? My brothers and sisters, myself, to a boarding school. Uh, the school that I was sent to was run by the Society of Mary. We had 20 priests on the staff of the school. Uh, we were very much involved in their lives. And they were also a missionary congregation. And the missionaries came back to the school, told us their stories. And I think my vocation grew out of that. As a young man, you, you, you saw these men coming back and you aspired to be, uh, to be like them. Yes. Yeah. My family was from a, a rural background, farming background. And uh, the stories of the mountains to see uh, were very appealing. You have been, I mean, the Cook Islands has been the last in a string of missions that you have had in the... Pacific Islands. Um, has this become your home now, the Cook Islands? Well, I've only been in the Cook Islands for one year and 32 years in other parts of the Oceania area. Uh, so I've worked in uh, Samoa for three years, Fiji for about 19 years, and Vanuatu for 11. So each place became my home. The Cook Islands is outside the particular mission area of my own congregation, uh, so it was a real surprise uh, to be asked to be bishop there. But the people have been most welcoming, and I can call it my home. For those who have not lived there, have not visited there, we tend to lump all of these islands and the Pacific Islands together in terms of culture and our understanding. But of course, each one is very distinct. How would you say the Cook Islands is different in terms of culture than, for example, Vanuatu or Fiji or the other islands where you have served? The Cook Islands is an independent country with free association with New Zealand. Uh, they are New Zealand citizens. Uh, they are, or appear to me, to be very comfortable uh, with New Zealand. So they migrate a lot to New Zealand, uh, generally speak English more than their own local language, Cook Island Maori. And so for me, being a New Zealander, uh, it's very easy uh, to mix with them. So in other parts of the Pacific, 
Uh, the people are more nationalistic, uh, focused on their own identity, but the Cook Islands seems to be comfortable with both identities. What ethnic group are we talking about when we're talking about the Cook Islands? We're talking about uh, Polynesian. So they would have come from what particular, where would they have come from, if you would? Uh... Yeah, that's an interesting question, but uh, so the migration is generally looked from west to east, and we are speaking of uh, the Polynesians themselves being in uh, Hawaii, Tahiti, Cook Islands, and uh, Samoa Tonga in New Zealand. Your new diocese of Rarotonga has a Catholic population which number uh, well, approximately 17% of the total population. How is it that the Catholic faith has become, if you will, so established in Rarotonga in the Cook Islands? So the Original missionaries to the Cook Islands were the London Mission, Missionary Society and uh, they very quickly had uh, good success uh, in converting the local people to Christianity. Uh, so they were there about 1836-1840. After 60 years of Christianity, the governor at the time said to the chiefs that they had to prepare for uh, independence, for taking more leadership themselves. And he mentioned that it would be important to promote education. Hmm. The chiefs asked the governor how they would go about it. And his advice was, ask the Catholics. You mentioned chieftums, you, you mentioned, there is there a still traditional structures, if you will, um, and how present are those traditional structures still in the every, everyday life of the people on the Cook Islands? So as I said, I've only been in the Cook Islands for a year, but I am aware that now there is a national holiday in honour of the local chiefs, and I understand this day uh, is set aside to restore uh, the chiefs, the Ariki, uh, to their traditional place, to give them more respect. Uh, the government is very conscious that the country is built on three pillars, uh, on the chiefly system, uh, on religion, and on the political world centered on the constitution. Pope Benedict in 2011 nominated you and you were ordained in 2011 to the Bishop of Rarotonga, the Bishop of Rarotonga. Did you have an idea that this was coming your way or was it a bit of a surprise? Uh, no, I did not know it was coming my way. I was very much involved in leadership in my own religious order. I uh, had been novice master for nine years and then was just completing uh, six years as provincial, I knew I had a discernment uh, coming as to my future once I finished as provincial, but I never dreamt uh, it would be a bishopric, as that was not in my thinking, and particularly the Cook Islands, as my religious order does not work in that country. So when you heard the call, you were a bit stunned, I can imagine. I fortunately knew where it was, uh, but to be honest, I did not know a Cook Islander and had never visited the country. So yes, I was stunned. Did you, did you want to refuse? <laughs> <laughs> After the ceremony of your ordination, you were carried in a so-called sede gestatoria, a tradition seen only in Rome and the Cook Islands. What is this tradition? So I must admit the Latin word was completely new to me. <laughs> the local word is pata. The uh, custom has nothing to do uh, with imitating the Pope, mm. uh, so he does not need to be threatened <laughs> uh, by me. The traditional way of bringing a leader uh, onto the traditional ground uh, is the chief is carried in that particular uh, chair and the uh, leader of a church uh, is also given that uh, privilege. 
We've spoken a little bit about the traditional culture that is there, and you mentioned the government refers uh, increasingly to the local culture, to the local tradition, to the local chiefs. Is that also something that the church does as well? And is that increasing, or has it always been that the church has uh, m made reference to or worked in cooperation with the local chieftains for decisions that have been brought to the community? I would say that the church has always been respectful uh, of the traditional leadership. Uh, priest living in villages uh, is very conscious of the uh, chiefly system. Uh, there is no ownership of land and one has to negotiate leases and one would be turning to the uh, traditional leaders uh, for those decisions. Many have accused, not only in the Cook Islands, but in fact all over the world, uh, that when the missionaries come they suppress the local culture and, and so on and so on. I don't know what your experience has been in this regard and whether, whether one can say, has this been the case, not only in the Cook Islands, but perhaps in the Pacific Islands in general? And what is the situation today? How is it that the church is trying to work with the local culture? I consider myself a relatively new missionary to anywhere in the Pacific, only been there in the last 32 years, so was not present in the original wave. But my understanding was generally the Protestant religions were against a lot of the uh, local practices, came down hard upon them, and uh, people, when they met our own religion, were surprised to see that we were more sympathetic to their local culture and customs. And that was often a way in uh, to the hearts of these people. Could you give us some examples of how, for example, you would work to bring in the local culture into some of the Catholic traditions, for example? Well, one that in the Cook Islands is very relevant is uh, their local Cook Island Maori language. Uh, there has been a tendency to use English. I myself feel embarrassed because I have not learnt the local language yet myself, but uh, certainly liturgy uh, is conducted in that language, encourage the people to uh, write hymns. Uh, again, in the liturgy from time to time, uh, one sees dances. Uh, I suppose the offerings, the the offerings, the gifts that are brought to the would could also in, reflect what is the local offerings that are available. Uh, certainly, one is always garlanded with flowers. Uh, I always appreciate having a big neck <laughs> that I can accommodate can about fifteen <laughs> lays. Uh, wonder whether people can see my face at times. I want to turn the page a little bit to talk ab about the situation today, particularly the situation facing young people, facing the culture, um, because I, I can suppose, as in many other parts of the uh, Pacific Islands, that the culture is changing with secularization, with materialism, with um, perhaps the US media setting the trend, setting the flavor for a lot of these cultures, and please, you know, feel free to contradict if this is not the case. But um, how do you see the culture changing today, uh, and what is the challenge for the church and for the local cultures? So I agree that uh, uh, that aspect of our people's life, secularism, materialism, consumerism, we hear globalization uh, that is very much part of our world and having a big influence uh, on our people. I hear you frequently kind of mentioning the influence of America. Uh, in the 32 years that I have worked uh, in the South Pacific, uh, America is very much in the background. Uh, we would be more focused on Australia and New Zealand, who perhaps are influenced mm -hmm. uh, by America. So our television comes from New Zealand, and that is... That uh, sets the trend, if you yes. will, that sets the tone. But 
uh, your uh, position there, though, is certainly I have to admit that uh, uh, consumerism, uh, materialism, is certainly affecting uh, church life. And uh, how do you see it for the young people? Do you do you see that are the young people, for example? still drawn to the faith, still drawn to the church, or are they falling away in favor of materialism, in favor of secularization? Uh, certainly, uh, as in other parts of the world, uh, that trend is uh, very present uh, in the Cook Islands. What are the particular challenges facing young people in the Cook Islands? If you could identify and say, this is a problem, this is a challenge that they're, they're confronting. The uh, big problem for our youth is employment. Uh, the opportunity for employment in the Cook Islands is extremely limited and the tendency is uh, to migrate to either New Zealand or Australia in order to get uh, good employment. I've read, and I don't know if this is uh, true or not, but I have read that suicide, youth suicide, is a is a problem, and particularly that there are stresses in the Cook Islands environment or context, if you will, which lends itself to the youth suicide. Is this something that you would confirm, and what would those stresses be? So certainly uh, around Christmas, uh, we experienced uh, four young people committing suicide, which was a major shock uh, to the nation and many steps uh, were taken to try to address the problem. And the only explanation I can give is that uh, children in the Cook Islands are very um, much appreciated, uh, very much uh, honored by their parents, and one might use the word pampered, uh, that they are put on a pedestal uh, at every occasion and it would seem that they grow up uh, too quickly. Uh, emotionally, uh, they perhaps have uh, uh, got out of their depth. And when they meet uh, situations where a relationship is broken uh, or a parent simply says, no, you can't do this, then the reaction is over the top and the person takes their life. I want to also rest on this question of the family. What are the attacks on the family today? In the Cook Islands, I mentioned uh, we have very elderly uh, grandparents uh, looking after children. We have many situations where parents are in New Zealand earning an income and children can be in the Cook Islands uh, with caregivers. So just by speaking of that, the family, traditional family structure uh, is broken. Mm. And so who is really responsible uh, for children? Uh, the grandparents do their best, uh, but they're not parents as such. And yeah, so the structures can uh, get broken. Uh, they are loose and the family does suffer uh, as a result. Another question, which is the growing significance of the Pacific Islands, particularly with the two great forces in the world, China and the United States. China, of course, has been investing heavily in infrastructure in the Pacific Islands region, and now the U.S. has been committing millions of dollars, establishing a counterweight, if you will, uh, to the Pacific region, uh, to China. Do you find yourselves getting caught in this uh, balancing act, if you will, between these two great superpowers? Personally, I am uh, perplexed by it. So as you rightly said, and now we are very much aware of China uh, in the region spending uh, large sums of money and giving to the Pacific Island governments uh, what they want. So New Zealand, Australia will tend to tell the Pacific Islanders what they should have, uh, whereas China will give them what they want. sports uh, 
complexes uh, in the Cook Islands. They built the courthouse, the police station. Wow. Just opened the building for Ministry of Education. And, and these are the things that people are asking the government. Government can't provide, and China uh, readily gives. Uh, so the big question that someone like myself would ask, uh, but why is China doing this? What does China want? want? Uh, are they getting it already? Mm. One thinks of our huge resources of um, uh, fish and Cook Islands. The thing that's now being spoken about is uh, rare earth minerals uh, in the ocean for cell phones and for things like this. Mm -hmm. Things like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the question for you is, China is pushing from one side, America pushing from the other side. In many ways, it's a beneficial situation, but for how long? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and the local politicians seem comfortable. <laughs> to take uh, the money where yes. it comes. <laughs> I mean, they are desperate and... Uh, it's most probably an answer to their prayers. <laughs> <laughs> I want to uh, talk a little bit about the church, vocations, uh, the growth of the faith. Let's talk a little bit about vocations first. Um, are there native vocations or are you still very dependent on missionaries like yourself coming from abroad? And how would you encourage uh, local vocations, particularly in the environment where young people, as you say, are losing the faith or at least not there you don't see the growth of the young people in the church. So the Cook Islands uh, has only one diocesan priest, a Cook Islander who has been ordained uh, two years. And at the moment I only have uh, one seminarian uh, in the major seminary in Fiji and he is actually a Fijian uh, who worked for nine years in the Cook Islands. So vocations is a huge problem. And again, I think we've covered the reason why, uh, the breakdown in family, uh, youth being more interested in the material, secular world, and it's very hard to attract them. You mentioned that you're in the development of a pastoral program, and I don't want to give away any secrets here about what that might be, but how do you intend to turn this around? What can you do to try and encourage, or are you going to be appealing around the world and saying, please send us your missionaries because we need you still in the Cook Islands to support our faithful? Traditional missionaries are hard to find uh, in the uh, church today. I would love to have my own clergy uh, from the Cook Islands. At the moment, we are trying to develop the school, uh, particularly its Christian Catholic character, and would hope to attract uh, pupils not only to the priesthood, uh, but to the sisters and uh, particularly the catechists. Yeah, I want to talk a little bit about catechists because that would seem to be also perhaps an alternative channel through which the faith can be communicated. Um, what programs would you have in place for catechists, for example? And uh, is there a response? And, and are they sent out two by two? What is, what is the day-to-day, -day, if you will, of a catechist? So first of all, I would like to say that uh, Cook Islands is made up of uh, 15 islands scattered over two million square kilometers mm. of ocean mm. and we have no priests uh, in five parishes. So in other words, these parishes are run by uh, local catechists. So they are extremely important. Uh, they are holding our Catholic communities together. Uh, again, because of transport, it's very hard to run renewal courses for them. How often would one of these islands, for example, see a priest? Islands in the northern part of the diocese, of which there are four, uh, have not seen a priest for two years. So wow, they're I really have they're tremendous respect for the catechists. Amazing. Uh, for myself to travel to these northern islands uh, uh, by plane is more 
expensive than my coming here to Rome. And when a catechist, uh, how does it, is it then a liturgy of the word? Or, for example, what would happen on a Sunday? Uh, how, the villagers would gather together and there would be a reading of the litur uh, or texts. And how, how would that take place? So they would have, first of all, the liturgy of the word. Uh, catechist would also explain the word of God with a simple homily. Uh, fortunately, all these islands have good communication with broadband and I or others can send them material in order to prepare these liturgies. And for baptisms or weddings or uh, a priest would have a whole line of people waiting for uh, uh, marriage uh, blessings I would suppose. In those very isolated places uh, we allow the catechist uh, to baptize uh, but for weddings uh, one has to uh, sometimes give permission for a local pastor uh, to do the wedding. As, as I said, uh, two years, and I cannot guarantee those people when a priest will come. It must be hard for you uh, not to be able to respond to the pastoral needs that you see so much in front of your face. So I suppose something that I find hard to live with I have been in the diocese for over a year and I still have not seen half of my diocese. And transportation would be the biggest problem, the biggest challenge it because is. of the scattered nature of your diocese. Yes. Perhaps what hasn't come out in the interview is uh, these communities are extremely small. Uh, we may be speaking uh, 70, 100, 150 uh, Catholics. Uh, in the hands of catechists. So that explains why the transport is so expensive. Your Excellency, thank you for being with us today in our program. Thank you very much, Mark. It's been a great pleasure. Good, thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for having been with us today on Where God Weeps. And if you'd like to know more about the situation of Catholics in the Cook Islands, or perhaps how you might be able to help with prayer or concrete action, I would encourage you to look at the contact information at the end of this program. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Take care.